without some of you. Wish it would not. Hope that you are looking forward to this week. I do hope and pray that it is a week that you truly can look back and be thankful for all the things that you have been blessed with. Today we're going to be in probably the most well-known chapter of the, the entire Bible, Psalm 23, as you can probably guess. But I want to go through each of these verses and examine them and consider them, because they can give great, great comfort in times of need. Let's be honest, we all need it at times. In light times, it can give us encouragement, it can, it can lift us up. In times of darkness, it can give us sustenance and hope for, the, and hope for tomorrow. And as we go on today, I want to encourage you to look not only here, but all throughout God's Word, so that you can receive the blessings that it brings. Now this may be the most well-known chapter, but it is by far not the only chapter that can bring great hope and encouragement and strength, both in good times and bad. Today I'll be reading out the Amplified Version, and the reason for that is the Amplified Version gives the definitions and meanings of words right, with, right inside the text. And with this chapter in particular, I personally feel that it brings out some things that we may have not considered before. And so David writes, The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him. Not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table, table before me in the presence of, of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my brimming cup runs over. Surely, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. The Lord my shepherd, apart from whom I have nothing, <coughs> and with whom I have everything. Jesus many times compared his followers, compared his people to sheep. This is kind of a running theme throughout, throughout the Gospels. He says, I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. He says, I go to look for my lost sheep. He says, I protect them. I provide for them. He says, they know my name and they follow me. He is a shepherd that is personal, and who is loving, and who is caring, and who is providing. 
for all that we need in heaven. We truly have lack of nothing that we need in heaven. He's given it all. He didn't, he didn't hold something back. He didn't put something away for later. When Christ came, he did all of it. He provided, provided all that we need to follow him, to be with the Father. Furthermore, he makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. Sheep, if you do not know, are stubborn creatures. They're also exceedingly dumb creatures. If you allow them, they will eat grass in one place without moving until they're chowing down on the dirt beneath it. They're stuck. If they don't want to rest, they'll just kind of keep on meandering along. Sometimes meandering right off the cliff. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I must be made to stop and to rest. So many areas of life we think, oh well, I have to go. There, there, there's more to do. There's more to there's more to talk. There's, there's more to get done. I, I don't have enough time to fit it all in my day. And yet, Jesus says, come to me and rest. In the Old Testament, God gives the Sabbath. Telling Israel to stop, to rest. It was for their good. It was for their benefit. Sometimes we need to stop and feed on the word that God has given us. Satan tempts Christ. After fasting for 40 days, it, said, it literally says that he was hungry, as if that wouldn't be an obvious fact, but he was hungry. So, so Satan comes, he says, if you're really the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus replies, man, that says live on bread alone. But on every word that comes from the mouth of God, sometimes we need to stop. We need to feed on that which can nourish us. Instead of chomping down on the dirt. The good shepherd moves the sheep to where they can get nourishment, where they can get the things that they need to live and survive and to thrive and flourish. And he will lead us. He will lead us to where we can be nourished. He will lead us to where we can rest. He will lead us to where we can be refreshed in him. Sheep have a tendency to be afraid of moving water. So if you take a sheep down to the river and that river is flowing, they're not going to go near it. Because they're terrified of the moving water. As I said, sheep are fairly dumb creatures. A good shepherd, instead of trying to force his sheep into it, will take them to waters that are still, to waters that are calm, where they can come and be nourished, where they can come and be refreshed, where they can Receive the things that they need to survive. We do not follow a shepherd who forces us into horrible things all the time. He's going to make sure that we can never 
get the nourishment and get the things that we need. He takes us where we need to be. To flourish and to grow in him. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, of brightness and right standing with him, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Notice where refreshment and restoration come from. He leads us in righteousness. For his sake. For the glory of his name. Notice who the focus here is on. We're led into righteousness. We receive righteousness, but it's for his glory, for his children, and for his flock. He leads us where he desires. He desires that it for, for us to show that we are his children, to show that we are his flock. He doesn't leave us hanging out to dry, but he refreshes and restores us in himself. Well, sometimes you might think of that as our physical life. Well, if I, if I do good things and I follow it, I believe the right things, and I say the right things, then everything's going to go well for me. But as we see time and again in the scripture, the greatest refreshment, the greatest restoration is a fixing, is a mending of our spiritual relationship with Him, with the Father. When Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well, he tells her, I have living water who, who, it, who and whoever drinks from it will never thirst again. And she, says, she says, well, give me some so I don't have to keep coming here. <laughs> it shows me. It's not physical water that he's offering. He's not offering a magic cup that she drinks from that she doesn't get thirsty. Well, he is offering. It's a continual and a, and a constant restoration of who she is before God. And if we are refreshed and restored in our spirit, we can live lives that are refreshed and restored regardless of the situation that we find ourselves in. And so we can say, yes, so I walk through the deep sunless valley in the shadow of death. I will fear or dread no evil. For you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort me. Notice the promises to come through the valley of death. Not to avoid it, not to go around it. <clears throat> aside from being stubborn creatures, aside from being creatures that are scared of moving water, it is certainly possible to scare a sheep to death. This is where, this is where I say, if you want proof that not everything evolved from everything else, look at the sheep, please. I learned a video of the goats that you scared them, and they sit and they fall over. But you can literally scare a sheep to death. You can scare it so bad it will keel over and die on the spot. <laughs> we laugh because we think it's funny. And it is. But so many today become paralyzed with fear. Paralyzed of what the future holds and what if, what, if, what, if, what if this happens? What if things don't go according to plan? And we get, we get paralyzed with fear. To the point 
point where he might as well be dead. There is no need to fear him. Because we have a shepherd who leads, who guides, and who protects us in himself. Most people here probably know in Romans chapter 8 where Paul writes, I am persuaded neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can strip us away from the Savior. His rod protects us from predators, and they are many. His staff protects us from ourselves. So we don't walk off the cliff. So we don't fall off the trap to our deaths. He protects us on both sides of the equation. There's no need to panic. There's no need to be terrified of what might happen. There's not even reason to be terrified of what is happening right now. Now we may be scared at times. We may be extremely concerned. But there's no need to panic at the point of paralyzing, destroying fear. Because we have a shepherd who will lead us through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death. In fact, he protects us so well that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my burning cup runs over. It is safe to eat, it is safe to rest, because the work is done and the enemies have been defeated. You would never sit at rest and sit at ease while all your enemies are arrayed right in front of you if they had not been completely and utterly defeated. And yet, and yet, he sets us down and prepares the feast for us while our enemies are there. Because he has won the war. The war is over. The war has been won. We may be fighting battles in our day and age, but the war is already concluded. He anoints my head with oil. Understand that in a hot and arid climate, oil acts as a cooling agent. And so, like if you take oil and you put it up, put it across someone's head, you're giving them something that gives them comfort, that helps them to cool down, that helps them not be be so weary from the heat that surrounds them. Furthermore, in Jewish culture, if you had a cup in front of you. Let's say I was over at Ned's house. And he sets the cup in front of me and he pours a drink and he continues to pour until, until the cup flows over. This was a sign that the guest was welcome to stay at the residence of the host for as long as they wished. And yet, at this feast, at this table, where we have been given comfort with oil, the shepherd goes a step farther and pours the drink so full that it fills over, that it overflows, as a sign that we are welcome to stay with him for as long as we wish. 
He says, if you want to stay with me forever, please. You are welcome for eternity. He goes beyond what we expect. He goes beyond what we could ever think of. We may stay as long as we like. And so David writes, Surely only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. This is what we have and where it is. An eternal opportunity to live and rest and comfort and peace and joy and love. To live in the very presence of God himself. This is what we are invited to. This is what the shepherd brings us to. And we may walk through the valley. We may walk through death itself. But he won't leave us there. He won't keep us there. Jesus says, Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Put your yoke upon me and learn from me. He says, Hey, mine. My burden is easy, my burden is light. When we live in the presence of the Savior, when we live in the presence of the Shepherd, we no longer have to fear, we no longer have to be distressed. I know over the last couple of weeks I've talked a lot about stressful and distressing things. <laughs> Who is in power, no matter what is happening at our job, no matter what is happening with our families, no matter what is happening with our friends, no matter health or sickness or wealth or poorness, no matter what is going on, Christians have great things to be thankful for always because our shepherd is good. And that's a shepherd. He offers healing, safety, guidance, love. He offers protection. He offers help. If you have not come to him, to become one of his flock, Time is now to do so. He offers everything and more. And he says, bring your burdens to me and let me take them. If you have been his, you have walked away. If you're like that sheep who walked away, the shepherd comes for you. Time to return is now. To be once again part of his flock, to be once again under his protection, under his hope and his help and his providence. If you, if you need encouragement, if you need help, if you need prayer, the time is now to offer 